Johannes, uh, really nice to meet you. So nice um, to meet you too. you're working with the Hunger Project. Yes. Yeah, so, and I was I was just interested in. I mean, we were talking before about uh, a bit about what you guys are doing. I just wondered if you could well tell me again. Yeah, uh, so I'm a student ambassador for the Hunger Project. I go to the Stockholm School of Economics, uh, where we have a small group that's working with uh, spreading information about the Hunger Project since uh, we're working quite long term, so we're thinking that by telling students now about the Hunger Project, they'll be able to know in five years when they're actually working and earning some money. Um, but the Hunger Project as a whole is a quite uh, dynamic organization uh, which uh, uses different strategies in different countries depending on uh, what is needed. But we work a lot with uh, women empowerment and uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurship at a very grassroots level. And um, the way uh, we use our money is uh, actually pretty much only uh, to pay for employees. Yeah. Therefore, there's basically no uh, no corruption at all. Yeah. Because what we do is uh, we employ people locally, which they go out and try to inspire people. Like in Africa, we have something called the epicenter strategy, where you uh, help people realize how they can change their life situation, and then you just help them along the way. They at first they get to do some. Uh, a project of their own, like just gathering rainwater so they don't have to go to the well one day and yeah. thereby get a few extra hours. And uh, then you work from there, and uh, the final stage is that you like you build this kind of epicenter, which is a center for like about 10,000 people, um, where they, they build this themselves, and it's, uh, it contains like a microfinance bank, which uh, the women takes care of it, yeah. and um, and what do you say? Uh, like school and uh, oh, I forgot the word for it. Just <laughs> school, <laughs> healthcare, oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, and like food storage, food processing uh, things and like. And they get this little center, and often this can be in like places where they're not very much, but like shacks. All around, and then they build like this big house. It's nothing like it yeah. in miles yeah. radius, and they built it themselves. Yeah. So they get, they have something to be proud of, and something that is very sustainable because it's like blood, sweat, and tears. You know. You know. So um, and uh, you guys are seem to be really good at social media type stuff. I know, that, like um, you you did really well to you got the uh, Twestable Stockholm. Then, and I remember because Accra, I, I know the you know Rayo and the, the team there, and we were in a vote for it. But you guys were like Poo, way ahead, and I, I wondered I wondered if you could tell me a bit about yeah you know, we were talking before about how young young people can use tools now to sort of really sort of mobilise in different ways a bit, and I I just yeah. wondered why you think things are changing, and particularly you know the sort of people we've got here at uh, in Stockholm who are. You know, often really, you know, there's loads of brochures over here and sort of, you know, everybody with their booklets and all that sort of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just wondered how you think things are changing for your your generation. Yeah, well, the how internet... You campaign your... Well, there's a lot of different media types right now. There are, like, giving so many possibilities. We talked earlier about how you were... Uh, use SMS to yeah. be able to gather reports, and I uh, I just love that. And I you just see how it spreads more and more, and the internet is helping it along by like yeah. being able to gather it. And uh, for us, uh, we would like to have something like this, uh, but uh, locally we're using media's like Facebook and uh, whatever because it's it's a really easy way. Yeah, to well, it's funny because Facebook with Acvo. <coughs> um, Peter in Holland's always saying to me, "Oh, Mark, we need to do more with our Facebook group." And I'm like, "Because I'm really, really into Twitter. I mean, I'm just yeah. you know, live my entire life by Twitter. <laughs> um, but I really, I can't. I find Facebook is is kind of different. And um, but I can see how it can be really good for campaigners because we're not really a campaigning organisation. And um, but w how do you think? Facebook works from that point of view. Why is Facebook good for this sort of stuff? Um, 
I'd say like, because Twitter, I'm not a very frequent Twitter user, I'm yeah. kind of getting into it right now. And What's I'd your say, handle? What's that? What's your handle, your name? Uh, oh, that, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's, it's like Smilky. Um, yeah, forget that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is that I think what's very good about it, because in Twitter you have like you can make these really short links that links to a movie and yeah. yada yada. But the great thing about Facebook is the embedding that you actually it drops down to in, into someone's newsfeed and you just press play. Yeah. And that way. Uh, it's very easy to like convey a, a little longer message. You get the visual as well, yeah. as well sound, everything. Yeah. I think that's what's really great about it because you can really capture someone. Yeah, I, I also movie. think one of the things with Facebook that um, differs. You can grab that. All right. Just point them yeah. if you want. Let's just keep it reasonable. One of the things with Facebook, I think it's interesting how for different ages it, it sort of varies because I think students tend to live a sort of sort of it's one, they have one identity basically. You know, they're there, they're studying, they're partying. They, they sort of, their social and their work worlds are very, very closely connected. Yeah. Um, but I think for quite a lot of people who, um, you know, are older, Facebook is kind of for friends stuff or family, but they never really mix it with anything else that they do. And I think a lot of people kind of struggle to kind of use Facebook to build out new fresh kind of networks um, a lot of you know when you're, you're sort of you know people I know in their 30s or 40s who use Facebook it's like this reunion of people that they used to know but it's for me so for me with Twitter because um, I'm in my 30s and it's like you, you kind of Twitter is constantly you're, you're stretching out and yeah. you're constantly finding new people to understand, sort of, and it's, Twitter's really good at developing understanding, I think, between people of what people are interested in, you know, what sort of other people they follow, what sort of links that they, they're interested in, so what sort of topics they're interested in. And also something about their personality in terms of, you know, their humour or their, the, you know, what, just what they're into. Yeah. Um, and so, whereas I think Facebook for... For say for my generation is a little bit it's a little bit closed to be doing campaigning type work with or do, do you know what I mean because exactly. all, you know if I'm using Facebook like all my friends and my there's a lot of my friends from you know ten years ago fifteen years ago like if I spend all my time on Facebook going on about ACFO they're like what's this all about you know. This guy just can, and, and do you see what I mean? Whereas I think, absolutely, if, as a yeah. student, you can kind of um, do it. Do sort of, it's the world slightly differently. Kind of Facebook, I think, works for that group in that sense. Whereas for me, Twitter is way, way better at doing that because I don't have to bother all my my old friends with what I'm doing work-wise now. Yeah, I see what you mean. Absolutely, but do you, yeah. Um, and I do agree, and that's a very important thing for us students as well. You do not want to be the one who's like always just spamming about this organization, because that you do have this option on Facebook where you can hide yeah. all news from this person, yeah. and you're gonna get hidden if you're just like blah blah blah. So you gotta, yeah, you can't do it too much. Um, do you, uh, but, one question I've got about the way you work as a you know in a as a, stu as a student represented this stuff. Yeah. So I used to be involved with um, something called ISEC, which is a big international student business economics thing. And I, you know, I was organising a World Congress in Brighton and stuff like that. But we ran it in quite sort of official way. You know, there was the president, the third, and it was all very hierarchical. Yeah. And now the way that ACVO works, you know, our organisation is really... <laughs> is. You know, it's a very much a networked organisation. I mean, we've got different people with different roles, at different levels of decision making. But it's it's not like a, it's not a hierarchy. And you know, where I'm in London, Thomas is in Stockholm. You know, Beth and Gino are in San Francisco. We've got people in the Hague, and we all use video chat to, to work. And it's it's for that. But I wondered if the kind you know student organisations are actually changing how they work yet, 
or are they still sort of sticking to quite, you know, I mean, all the student organisations at this event, yeah. still like, they're like, I always feel like they're playing like, like student UN, you know, so, oh no, we need to agree on a, we need to ratify our statement on this, our positioning paper on this issue. And it's like, what is this, the 1950s? You know, Actually, um, I think that's uh, quite fun because the thing with the Hunger Project is uh, when we're out in the communities, we're trying to work with this uh, kind of hierarchical, non-hierarchical style where uh, you do, you want the ideas to come from the bottom. You want them to create something themselves and you just like yeah. trying to make it that way. And uh, we want to work the same way here. Yeah. So I can say in our student union as a whole, all projects hierarchical everywhere. Yeah. Like, really. It still is, but, is it? Yeah, 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 really. But <laughs> actually, just our That's group, <laughs> we're trying to do it um, like the Hunger Project way. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just the student ambassador, which means just I'm responsible for the Hunger Project at our school. Yeah. But other than that, we're just like, we're just a group where people, they try to come up with ideas and like, yeah, I have this idea, anyone want to come with me on this and then they form a little group that trying to make this work and everyone yeah. helps each other and there's like I'm not I'm not a leader in that sense we're all like on the same level yeah great so my last question why do you think hunger project like got all this support on the festival thing and it just raced ahead you were guys were miles ahead of everybody else what do you think the the magic the yeah. magic thing is uh, I do think it was actually Facebook this time or because we use both Twitter and Facebook, but I think like uh, it's quite easy, at least as a student, you're just like, hey guys, can everyone come and vote for this thing yeah. that I'm doing? Yeah. And it's very easy to just go in and click and vote. So I think it was a lot of a lot of students actually that yeah. went and voted. Yeah, they have the time. <laughs> Great. Well, really good to talk to you, and um, thanks. And yeah, oh, and I need to introduce you guys, you to the guys at Charity Water sometime, because in New York, they're really cool. That's and I great. think I think you'd be really interested in some of their stuff, and they'd be really interested in some of the stuff you guys are doing. So, um, cool. Thanks. Thank you.